number that we're actually looking at is 2149 when all is said and done. That is breakout point. That's the number you really want to focus on because between that line and going up to the high back in 2011, there's nothing in between it. So there's a very high potential for violent moves to the upside if we get past that point. Prepare for shock and awe. Gold, silver, copper, and zinc. This 30 cent a share company could be looking at life-changing gains. Even Resource Capital Inc., a billion dollar private equity fund made up of expert mining analysts and investors, just quietly took an 18% stake in the company. Learn more at crushthestreet.com slash hard assets. Hello everyone and welcome into crushthestreet.com. I'm Kenneth Amaduri, and man, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. $17 silver. We have hit $17 silver. It's going to be a discussion in this interview, but we got a lot to talk about. We got Trader Steph joining us again. She does fusion analysis of the markets and uses the technicals to draw conclusions. And I got to tell you, she knows her stuff. She's got a 14-year history with the New York City investment banking industry. She's been on the show before. You can follow her at Trader Steph on Twitter. Trader Steph, thanks for joining me. Hey, Ken. Thank you for having me back. Absolutely. Well, like I said, we got a lot to talk about here. Um, we got gold, silver, CME, COMEX rules. You know, what was changed on December 10th, 2014? We got to talk about the significance of this and uh, what we are seeing today. Sure. Uh, there were some things going on back in the summer of 2014 and the early fall that I noticed, and it just began to look to me, you know, fundamentally and technically that there was some potential for some ripo moves, which <laughs> I saw them. And um, it was very interesting because shortly thereafter... R remind people of what that is. Sure. Um, rip your panties off moves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which CME actually came out and put out new rules that basically lay that out, which blew me away. I'm like, you're kidding me. So they came out with this these new rules, halting rules for trading back on December 10th, 2014. And I got a, a, a chart there that you can put up. And I highlighted just the gold and the silver prices. And you can see that they got these four different levels, one, two, three, and four. And once you make a specific dollar amount move in U.S. dollars, they're going to halt trading for a specific period of time, uh, up to five minutes or longer, depending on what it is. Now, there is a full document that someone can go, you can go Google it, and you just put in the Google line up there, uh, implementation of new Nymex Comex rule. It'll come right up at the top. And you can go read all the little gory details about how they do it. I'm not interested in that. But the point is, um, right bows are going to cause breaks and halts in the market. And I think we're really approaching that time when we're going to see this more often as we go through the late spring, through summer, and the fall. So, Steph, before we get into silver, let's talk about gold, what we're seeing here in 2016. Obviously, a lot different feeling on the markets than we've seen in 2015 when we first spoke. And, uh, you know, even our, our last interview, I mean, we're just seeing more confirmations of what is happening in the precious metals market. So give us your thoughts on this. Sure. Um, we ended the last interview. We, we did some of these charts. And I just want to bring up an important point that folks need to realize. Last night's move happened while you were sleeping. So if you weren't positioned before the move, as we're moving along today in the New York markets, it's just chopping sideways. You're not getting any opportunities. So it's important that you get positioned ahead of move. Um, with that said, I got the monthly chart there for you. And I ended the last discussion that we would be in a, a chopping range. And that was uh, January 15th. And actually, that's what we did. We stayed within that shallow falling wedge that's between the dotted lines. And we've just been hitting that overhead 50-day exponential moving average for three months in a row. That is actually the problem. But it's just a beautiful chart setup because you've got a pivot down below in December with the doji 
off the 150. And we almost have an alligator tongue set up just below where that black arrow is. That's the uh, DMI, the ADX setup. When that black line goes up into that, above that red line, and that green line starts to go north a little better, you get more momentum going, things can really start happening. Uh, we've got money flow moving in. We're above the 50 line, just below that. And volume looks great. Soap RSI looks great. Everything looks good, but anything can happen. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it's significant. One of the things you you did say in, in our previous interviews is to look for gold to go past the 1240 to 1250 range because that's where the August 2013 high was, and we're seeing that. We're seeing that now. I mean, obviously, it went up to around 1280 not too long ago, and we're seeing it break through these highs, and that's really what's significant about this bull market. Right, Steph? Yeah, we are. And the other thing that's very obvious on this chart, I didn't do the whole history of the chart like we did last time, all the way back to 1999. <laughs> but on those Fibonacci levels, those uh, numbers that are on the left with the blue dotted lines, you can see on this month, the high, we hit that almost to the penny. Mm. If you look left, the 38.2 Fib was 12.83, and we were just a few cents below that. Right. Very pretty. So let's move on to the daily. All right, so on to the daily. Uh, today, we've had quite a move in gold as well, but nothing like we had in silver, but we're going to get to that soon. So in gold, there's just, uh, there's a lot of charts out there, and there's a lot of good analysts, but you really need to be careful about the charts that you're watching. And I'm not saying, like, you know, I'm the goddess of charts. That's not what I'm saying. But there's just a lot of charts. So do your due diligence and follow somebody for a long time before you pay attention to their chart. Mm. You know, make sure they're humble and they're honest. <laughs> so when you look at this daily chart, you can see that we have the golden cross, and that's when the 50 crosses the 200. Now, I want to reiterate, I don't use moving averages. I use exponential moving averages, and you can look that up and see the difference. So when we look at this daily chart, uh, one of the most important things that came up recently was the golden cross. And what that is is a crossover of the 50 over the 200. And traders and uh, algos and high frequency trading and analysts all look for that cross because it generally indicates that you're starting to enter a very strong uptrend. Now, not only did we have that going on, but if you look below and you see how the ADX and the DMIs were set up, everything was very positive, volumes were very strong, and we were moving right along and getting past all those Fibonacci levels. Now, there's been a lot of concern about the gold price breaking down here because of various reasons, but we'll talk about that closer to the end of the interview. But we've been basically bouncing around that 1227 level, which is a FIB level. Mm -hmm. We had a nice move today, which tagged along with silver, but not as strong. And now we got a little resistance up there around 1254, 55. You really need to break through that decisively before we take out the high of 1283. Yeah, I mean, in the analysis you've done is is really significant here. Um, when it comes to what we are seeing in silver, Steph, it has been pretty spectacular. And a lot of analysts out there have said, you know, silver is the place to be when you look at, you know, the production, the silver to gold ratio, you know, the, the opportunity for silver to, to go up a lot faster than gold is has been made uh, the the case has been made across the board so i got to ask you what are we seeing with silver let's talk about the charts and uh, get right into it well i'm looking at the chart right now let's pull up the monthly but on my other screen screen i got the one minute chart up real time and there's some profit taking going on right now uh we put in a pretty good high today and that high was seventeen dollars and fifteen cents and right now we got some profit taking taking place. We're down to 1686. So with that said, on this monthly chart, the most important number that we need to be looking at in the near term is that dark blue line, which is exponential moving average. And that's drawing the Fibonacci going back to the $4 low mm. that occurred many years ago going up to the high from 2011. And that 150 was never violated on this whole move until back in late 2014, as you can see on this chart, it, it went below it. 
So now we're retesting that because when something is support and you break through it, then it becomes resistance. So that 1747 is real important. And if you draw your eyes down the chart, you'll notice that black arrow. We're just getting across on the DMI that ADX is coming up from underneath. Very important. The money flow, we're above the blue line. And all the way at the bottom, look at those volumes. That's a rising volume pattern on the rising price. So this is very bullish as we stand right now, but expect profit taking and volatility. I think we want to the daily from here. Yeah, you know, I just was going to ask you, we are seeing some pretty substantial moves in silver, a lot of momentum in the upwards bullish direction. Now, one of the things you pointed out in our previous interviews is to look for the 2134 uh, high we saw in January 2008 because this was a previous breakout point in which we saw go past once in 2010 once it hit that it skyrocketed from there to the 4978 level so you know get your thoughts on on that number and where we are today sure um, so looking at the daily chart I'll be able to point that out all right so uh, of late we've had an interesting pattern that occurred, and I've been pointing it out for a couple months now. That's an inverse head and shoulders on the silver chart down at the, at the base. It was building a base. And the neckline was right around 1630-ish. And that's what we took out last night. After this chart, I want to show a quick one-minute chart of what happened overnight, which has nothing to do with New York. But if you look at the very top of this chart, you see that red line and that light green dotted line. Okay. That's a 68, uh, 61.8 Fibonacci level. And when you take that line all the way back, the number that we're actually looking at is 2149 when all is said and done. That is breakout point. That's the number you really want to focus on because between that line and going up to the high back in 2011, there's nothing in between it. So there's a very high potential for violent moves to the upside if we get past that point. But what I've drawn here for folks is some Fibonacci extensions. And you can see on the right side, those blue dotted lines, those are all the numbers that you can put on your list to keep an eye on, including two red lateral lines, which are your typical lateral resistance. And when you see those, sometimes you get a thing called a confluence. You get a lateral that starts to bleed into a Fibonacci line, consider that a confluence. And then things get really interesting because we had a golden cross finally on the silver daily, as you can see there on the chart. We got an alligator tongue on the DMI, very powerful. We got the money flow going north. We got the rate of change going north. We have great volume flow. We have great Stoke RSI. There's nothing that's not bullish about this chart except for um, profit taking. So, Steph, let's get into the silver one-minute chart that you sent me. Uh, what are we looking at here? I mean, this is a, a little more down to the detail on what is going on with silver. All right, this is what happened last night. It actually began, and the whole move occurred in Germany, in Frankfurt, when the Forex opened. It didn't happen in London. It didn't happen in Shanghai didn't happen in Hong Kong, and I'm seeing all kinds of stuff out there in the media today saying it's this and it's that. It's none of that. But no one really knows exactly what it is, but it's definitely not those topics that people are bringing up. And it's, very, it's clear as day. And one of the most fascinating things about this chart is that just before London Open, we had a record one-minute volume. I mean, I've never seen this kind of one-minute volume on silver before, even in comics. You know, and Comex has large volumes, but this just completely blew it away. The 144,000 contracts in one minute. Huge. And that was on a buy candle. That wasn't selling. Steph, the miners have been really leading precious metals here. And we're seeing a lot of action with these miners. And, you know, it's, it's fulfilling, you know, because they have, a lot of people have said the miners will lead 
gold and silver and we've seen them take off since last September and it's been a lot of gains across the board here so let's start off with the GDX chart that you sent us sure uh, there's one indicator that's not shown on a start because it came from the daily but it's an important one just like on the silver and the gold daily we've got the golden cross well we also have that on the GDX and that happened on March 1st so with that said we're looking at the chart so white trend line that's coming down from the top left. Actually, there's two of them, but there's one that you see it, it touches two highs, and there's one that's a little bit more vertical. It goes up to the left. You don't know where it came from. One that you don't know where it came from goes all the way back to the 2011 high, and we reached that quite a while ago, uh, back in February, if I'm not mistaken. And what we have here is a setup where we've got an ADX, we've got an alligator tongue, the volumes are extremely bullish, and we've come right up to a lateral that we've hit. And that lateral is from January 21st, 2015, and that's what we bucked up against. We've also hit the 150 overhead, but if you notice in the background, there's some white dotted horizontal lines, and those are Fibonacci levels. I think the sh for short-term targets, we're looking at the 200-day moving average, which is at 25, uh, actually that's at 25.58, and the uh, Fibonacci level, which is a 23.6, just below that. So that's what I would be looking at. If we break through that with decisiveness, we're going to run up to that next Fibonacci level at 38.2, which is around 33 bucks. Mm. Wow. Well, and that's more so the, the majors, the GDX following what's going on with that. But let's talk about the junior miners, uh, the GDXJ. Sure. Well, just like the GDX, um, there's a daily indicator that's not shown, and that is the Golden Cross. And that happened on GDXJ on March 3rd. Now, the, the all-time high on the GDXJ Back in 2010, December, it was $179. And when you draw that trend line down, it comes down to about 70 bucks. And you can't see that on this chart right now. But if we draw a trend line down from the August 2013 high and the July 2014 high, that's what we've just taken out. But there's also a lateral that goes back um, to June of 2013 and May of uh, 2014. And it's like an intersect. It's just another confluence. So we, when we get these confluences, they're very important technical indicators. And at the same time, we got an alligator tongue. All the technicals are very positive. Lastly, look at the Fibonacci levels. We're in between zero and a 23.6. All eyes seem to be looking at that 23.6 because that's back on the trend line from the August high of 2013. So it's a perfect setup. I will be looking for around 55 bucks, but we need to take out this level decisively or in large volume. Trader Steph, I want to talk about the major news last week with Deutsche Bank admitting to rigging the gold and silver markets. How significant is this to you? That word confluence seems to come up a lot. I figured that out on my first accident with a motorcycle. Mm. But it's not just Deutsche Bank because obviously, you know, they've, they've been caught and it's in gold and it's in silver and now we've got two separate billion-dollar lawsuits that have come out of Canada. I would suspect that something's going to come out of the United States, too. And they're looking at going back, they're going back to 1999 to get compensated for the losses. So this is huge. But that's not the only reason. That's not what's causing this. It, it's a catalyst, but it's one of the confluences. Remember back in December, we had Japan announce that they were going NERF, negative interest rate policy. That ties in with the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, but it was only a quarter percent. But the Japan NERP just really kind of put all that in check me. And remember in the last interview we talked about with uh, James Rickard, 
had discussed. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about Saudi Arabia and a possible DPEG from the U.S. dollar. Now, coincidentally, we got Saudi Arabia raising all kinds of hay about releasing the 9-11 secret 28 pages, which isn't going to tell us what happened. But they're threatening to sell three-quarters of a trillion dollars of U.S. treasuries. And that would entail a DPEG from the U.S. dollar. So that's out there. We also have that Teta Bank in Europe that just conducted a bail-in less than two weeks ago. Depositors got a 100% haircut. I think bondholders got a 54% haircut. Wow. And then we have the commitment to traders reports. We got the commercials who are very heavy short. We've got the hedge funds, which are the large specs, who are very heavy long. And there was kind of like a pause for a couple of weeks because the commercials, the bullion banks are always on the opposite side of the tree. If the price is going up, they're adding shorts. If the price is going down, they're adding long. So as the price was rising, they were adding shorts, and then there was a couple weeks of this indecision and a pause, which ties in with the technicals on the chart. And then suddenly last week it all changed. They layered on another 20-some thousand shorts as of um, the 12th. So I find this very interesting. I think they're caught in a corner. Yeah. Yeah. So, what are your what are your thoughts on that? What What are the banks gonna do now with what we're seeing with precious metals? I mean, are they gonna lose control here uh, with the markets potentially? Oh yeah, of course that's possible. I mean, you could have a force majeure in Comex. I mean, all they have to do is settle in cash the next day with you, no matter what the price is giving. So they're not really gonna. It's, it's gonna be no pain for them because when you read the fine print on the contract. They don't have to deliver you gold. <laughs> so, f- Trader Steph, what about the Fed here? We saw them kick the can here by agreeing to not raise interest rates uh, in the last meeting. What are your thoughts on what will go on in the, the future here? And is it going to continue to be bullish for gold? And is it also going to be continue to be bullish for the stock market. The stock market is hitting uh, some new highs and people are getting optimistic about what we're seeing in stocks. Yeah, well, I think this is all about negative interest rate policy over in Europe and Japan, you know, because the, that just emphasizes the U.S. dollar being the best looking house on a bad block. So the reserve, you know, raises interest rates, but gold just starts rising. The U.S. dollar starts falling. We've got the election process taking place. I really don't think that the Fed, I think it's a one and done. So I could be way off base. I think they're just jawboning. But if they try to either raise another quarter point, um, there's just so many bad indicators in the economy right now. I don't think they're going to raise rates anymore. And if they do do another one, because this one they've done has been completely ineffective, what's the point of doing another one? What are they going to do? I don't know, but I think think we're looking at a black swan type of event with that confluence of events. There's just so many things happening right now. I think they're going to get stuck. Steph, I wanted to ask you about the stock market. I know we hadn't talked about we didn't talk about this pre-interview, but I wanted to get your thoughts with what we're seeing with the stock market continuing to kind of trickle higher here. Is this is this bullish from a technical perspective? Yeah, I find the dead cap bounce very interesting. I didn't prepare those charts uh, for you today. I really wanted to focus on the gold and silver. Um. But, you know, if there is a hint, you know, just like people are flowing into the uh, looking for the best house on the block for a while there when the dollar was rallying very strongly, okay? well, there's money flowing into the United States into equities because of negative interest rate policy. People are looking for a safe haven. And if things are really that bad, and if the Fed doesn't raise interest rates, and maybe they do a people's QE and the helicopter comes flying along. Because Bernanke just suggested that, not regular QE, but cutting everybody a check, which they've talked about in Europe. You know, the stock market could take off, despite the fact that the technicals were looking at you in the face and saying, this doesn't look good, we're breaking down, 
every rally is being sold when you look at the weekly charts, but confluence of events, things keep happening, things keep changing, and the markets will do something that you don't expect it to do. That goes for gold and silver as well. But I don't see the underlying fundamentals at strong at all for the S&P 500 or the Dow. It's all a farce. The Fed has pumped it up, and they've admitted that over the past three months. Staff, I, I want to get your closing thoughts here. Uh, just any sort of general advice and, and the things that you're suggesting people to do here in 2016. And, of course, let everyone know how they can reach out to you and follow your uh, work that you put out on a daily basis. Yeah, sure. Um, the website that I keep is Twitter, and that will be at Trader Steph. And I keep a running history of all my charts. So it's all there for you to pull up and read. If you're investing in gold and silver, you have to keep in mind that you're trying to retain your capital. You're not trying to gamble and become a millionaire. You know, you are you have the opportunity to make some gains along the way. And with that said, you have to be paying attention to what's going on in the market. It's not a 401k or an IRA automatic deposit every week or every month. It's not that kind of market. You need to pay attention to what's going on, and you need to be ready to take uh, some profits at some point and maybe buy some real estate. But long term, uh, there is no reason at all not to be bullish longer than long term. I'm talking going out three to five years. Well, Trader Staff, we definitely appreciate you coming on the show, sharing your knowledge, and you know, combining. I, I love the way you put it in our last interview. You you do fusion analysis, and uh, again, it's greatly appreciated. We'll be looking at these numbers here going forward with gold, with silver, and definitely keeping our eyes on the stock market here. Thank you so much for coming on the show with me today. All right, thanks for having me.